heard the gospel and have been thinking about it and have been pondering it and have been loving God in our hearts. And so we live in a synthetic version of these things. And when you, this evening, later, talk about your morning that you had, which was really boring with Father Gray, and to say it was boring because five-word answer, synthetic, the synthesis is, is important. But if the ingredients in the synthesis are wrong, the synthesis is wrong. And you have to be able to speak from a synthetic point of view that is actually correct. <clears throat> All of these people who spend their lives talking about these things, people who actually die for the sake of the, of the gospel, whatever version of the gospel they believe, <coughs> honestly, they believe in the gospel. Um, and it's not just because it was kind of ish, but it was really, 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 truly important to them. And the synthetic parts just important as the basic ones. So, for example, at the time, so in 1453, when Constantinople is being overrun by the Ottomans, the primary theologians of the city were in Congress doing theology, having a debate. When Constantinople is about to fall and these guys are about to die, what were they talking about? Do you know? Angels. <laughs> because that's important. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good answer to your question, but all of these things are important, and you can't leave anything out. And if you leave anything out on purpose, that's a very bad thing to do. Now, we have to leave a whole lot of things out simply because we don't have the time. Like, we're not even going to talk about all the really fun parts of the Christological experience, which are based in the Old Testament all the ways in which Christ fulfills the prophecies and forms and rituals of the Old Testament. For more information on that, just simply read the letter to the Hebrews, written by someone. Right. I like to, I, I, I put it, it, for me, it's okay, it's part of the Pauline corpus, whatever. If we call it something, it's Paul. No one that I am going to use in terms of the, in the material that we're going to talk about today or ever will ever be, it's Paul. It's not Paul. But it's a letter, and it's that way, and it is what it is, and the church has always called it Paul to the Hebrews, and fine, okay, fine. But that's where the stuff is for the Old Testament, and understanding also the idea of propitiation in Christ, the idea of what it is that Christ paid for in the passion and death. That whole thing. It's all in Hebrews. It's not a very fun subject these days. Because <coughs> somehow there's some kind of debt or something that people have because of sin or something. And that's not really a, an area that's interesting anymore. But I think it's terribly, terribly interesting. So we're going to move on to Paul. Now, in very broad strokes, once again, hand-waving arguments, desk-beating arguments, machete-in-the-air arguments. The, uh, the, <clears throat> the point of the class today, this is what, so there, there's a form that they give us. These are the goals they actually have to yeah. achieve. Da, 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 da. Um, there, I would like you to be able to enunciate. Oh, you actually have that. They make copies of it. The, the, to enunciate what is going on with Paul. And what does it mean to have things which are before Paul, that is say, writings, words, phrases, sentences even, more than phrases, except there aren't really, um, that are before Paul, and the things that we get from Paul, and the things that we get that are Paul-like, and then like Paul-ish. So I have on the board behind me. Uh, the pre-Pauline as a first level, second level, Pauline, the letters of Paul, that we know that Paul actually for real, <coughs> nobody debates them. And I put them in order of their composition in each of the areas. Yeah. That is the order that we think that pretty much 
that, that scholars these days agree upon is the order in which they were written. That is not necessarily the order that they were written, that's just what we think these days is called a hypothesis, is the best one we have. A whole lot better than Q. This is the Q, as far as I'm concerned. Is there any uh, chronological, you know, as something goes through time, it's allowed to be drilled down and be a little bit more finer, like the book of John, the Gospel of John's, a little bit higher than the other three synoptic Gospels. Would Philippians be more advanced than the other letters, since it was the last one in this chronology? Uh, I think so. We have something in Philippians that we don't have in the other ones, like the Philippians hymn, Christ did not deem equality with God something to be grasped, Crystal. therefore he emptied himself. Oh my goodness, it's like the whole thing of Christology. And then like from Philippians into Hebrews forms a very nice link, but we're not going to talk about Hebrews. But yes, go on. No, 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 you're good. I'm just saying that Christological hymn. Right, which is which is very which is very yeah. concise, yeah. Yeah. clear, and, and done. However, it's not like Paul, then the others, then the others after each other. They're happening at the same time. Sorry, guys. <coughs> it's all in the same era. So the ones that are like Paul that maybe Paul didn't write aren't after Paul. They're during. I think. I mean, as as, as far as anyone wants to say. So Philippians is not the latest of those. I mean, it is and it isn't. Uh, but certainly a more, if we're going to talk about like synthetic and primary, the most synthetic one is going to be like 2 Timothy, where it's, 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 it's a whole different kind of thing, which is why it's part of the second uh, tradition above me, above me, behind me. Right? Yes. <coughs> Okay, is there something else I wanted to say? They can Okay, so uh, what happens next is we're going to talk about, we're going to open up the Bible and we're just going to read biblical bits and pieces. Okay, so get your Bibles out. And quickly tell me which Bibles that you have. Catholic study, which is a new American revised. The NAB revised. Does anyone have anything other than the NAB revised? They gave us all these. Ones. They gave us I have on my iPad different ones. Right. The, I will be using several, mostly, frankly, in Italian. The Bible of the Episcopal Conference of the Italians. Also, I like to use um, this guy, which is an, a revised standard version. And the Bible I actually pray with is a uh, Dewey Reeves, old-fashioned, which is all kinds of fun. So you don't have the RSVCE on the internet, yeah. So you like the Dewey Reeves? No, I like the Greek. Oh. I like I like the I like the Greek and the Septuagint. So like when I do my my exegesis, so a daily homily. In the life of the priest or the deacon, hopefully the deacon sometimes because the priest kind of gets bored about it. Um, I open up my synopsis of the Gospels, this book right here, and I look at something. <laughs> so, <clears throat> like the last time I was thinking about something important was when I was preparing for my little tiny homily on Wednesday evening. And it was um, in this book, Das Vater Unser, because the book is actually in German. Uh, but the it says, thankfully in Latin, Oratio Dominica, and just because everyone speaks English, the Lord's Prayer. And it tells me that, here it is, <coughs> and I'm going to show this around to you. And this is what I was reading to prepare myself to talk understandably about this pericope from Wednesday, the Gospel on Wednesday in the lectionary was uh, Luke chapter 11, 1 through 4-ish. I think it was 1 through 5. <coughs> and it tells me, like, well, look, here it is. There's the Luke, and there's the Matthew, which both of them have the Our Father, and it's just that Luke has the introduction to it that Matthew doesn't. And so that's why there are a couple columns here. 
And so this book, which maybe you should get someday, except in English probably, uh, has, like, here's the Greek one, and here's the, uh, they're both are Greek, but this is the Luke one, this is the Matthew. <coughs> Synopsis of the four Gospels. And there's one in English that looks exactly the same way, but this one's more fun, and I like to read the Gospel in Greek, because, you know, the Tadis things. So like there's the our father. Pater Hemon Hoentois Uranois Agis de to Onamasu. Is that like your go-to commentary for Homo's father? No, it's not a commentary. Well actually there is commentary in here because it's a really good book. Like down at the bottom it has this stuff about the our father from the Yes. From the Didache. And that's fun because the Didache is also in Greek, so that's here too. So the Didache is teaching about the Our Father, which is Kikaritomene. That's hell. That's from the Hail Mary. That's yes. not the Heart Father. That's the Hail Mary. <laughs> so, like, it, ha it has the, the 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 various Gospels next to each other, and so I can look at any pericope in here, and it'll give me what the Gospels have to say, all four of them. Oh, right. Parallel. Parallel. It's a synopsis. That is, say, sin horao, to to horao is to see, to see together. Synopsis. Anyway, will you teach me how to say that word later on, huh? <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> I, carry, I, I can even teach you how to write it. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> it's a it's a very helpful book to me because it also it tells you what the what it. So often when I read the Gospels, I think, but wait a minute, I know this story. Where else do I know this story? Oh right, you know, either Matthew, Mark, or Luke, and or John wrote the same thing. So, well, most commentaries tell you that. Yeah, but commentaries are someone's opinion about it. And most people, I don't like opinions. So how do you use, how do you use, how's that useful for you? Using the parables? Because like, especially in the version of the, of the, of the, of the Our Father, um, in, in Matthew's Gospel, it has a whole lot more words than Luke's. And so uh, it's interesting to see what are the things that Luke leaves out or quotes in. Oh, so it just helps you build the meat for what that Right. It also reminds me that the Our Father, of course, in this case, very well known to everyone I hear, is going to sound interesting. And when it comes to hearing it in the Gospel of Luke, it's going to sound wrong. Because in the Gospel, of, so the, the Our Father begins in Matthew. Our Father who is in the <coughs> uh, holy is your name. The Gospel of Luke says, Father, holy is your name. <laughs> and and it, it's, it's helpful. And the, the English one does the, exactly the same thing, but this is more fun because it's the Greek. And that's what the, that, the Gospels were written in Greek. We can all re agree on that. The original language for all these things <coughs> is Greek. Um, uh, the, your, 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 the, the, the may your kingdom come part, and then the part about may your will be done on the earth as in the heavens, in the, he in the heaven as upon the earth, as he says, um, is completely absent from Luke's telling. Um, this, is by, this is the reason why the quell, the, the, the Q source exists, to say like, oh, see, that phrase, it's from the Q because it's not in Mark. <laughs> We're going to talk about other other possibilities here in a second. It's your first thing here. Someone argued against the Q source. <laughs> because the Q source is like it has to be. Right. It just has to be. No, it's, it's just what 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 Vice said in like 1898. Yeah, it's nice. Schleier 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 in 1830 something was the first to say that there's probably a book of the sayings of Jesus that isn't part of the Gospels. Otherwise, it wasn't useful. It's just this, this idea that kept coming back and really gained a lot of popularity in like Bultmann in, in those days. Anyway, scripture scholars. Scripture scholarship is not my area of expertise. I think scripture scholarship is kind of boring. All right, um, then t the, the bread that you give us, that is Epiusion, give us this day. Uh, and the Luke, it says, Um, give us the give us the give us each day the daily bread, but 
the, the each day isn't part of the Matthew that we bring from the Father, except so this, in this case we bring in from the Luke. But it's really fun though, something that does not get translated. So if you go, by the way, in your, in your this is the, this is really not part of our thing. This is an excursus, and now we're wasting time. But this is really important. So if you go in your in your in your Bibles and actually open up Matthew six nine through thirteen, or Luke eleven one through four, choose one. Tell me what you chose. Matthew nine six through thirteen, or Luke eleven one through four. Who choose, who is choosing Matthew? I am. Great. Who's choosing Luke? Somebody choose Luke, please. You said Matthew. Nine, nine, Matthew, six. The, Matthew 6, 9 through 13, sorry. Six, nine through 13. Is the Our Father, which I think we can all agree upon as words of Jesus. Um, and then Luke 11, 1 through 4. Something true. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for choosing Luke. And this is all the, neat, the, the New American Bible, so I guess I'll choose one too. Okay, uh, Luke 11. Beautiful. <clears throat> okay, how does it say, give us this day our daily bread? What is the word for daily? The, the Reims Bible says daily. I have daily also. The NAB says daily, and that's in Matthew. Yes. Matthew says daily in the, in the NAB. Luke says daily. daily. Uh, Luke doesn't say daily. What does it yeah, say? It yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It says each day. Each, the each. The each is the thing that Luke has that Matthew doesn't have, even though Matthew's version is longer. Um, looking at uh, the Revised Standard here in my Greek Bible. Uh, all right, just a second. Yes, okay. Uh, daily. Um, that's not what the word means. It's just not what the word means. It's just not. It's just not in Which this century is, or is any daily. Daily. The word is epiusion, and that's a really useful word, especially for this class, <coughs> which is in Christology. So a lot of things happen in Christology. Frankly, happen in Greek. And one of the words that you should know, at least having heard once, maybe that you don't know, but you've heard it, is uzia. Yeah. Very good. Uzia means substance. That's no, that's uzo. <laughs> and, and we'll I like the way you're going. <laughs> um, you, you spell it uh, omicron, upsilon, sigma, iota, alpha. That's how, you, that's how you spell it. I'm sorry. There's, 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 no, there's no English, you know, Latin spelling of a Greek word. That's why Greek exists. There's, there's, there's Latin respellings, but it's like that. Okay, which all, all this, that's an O. That's a U. That's an S. That's an I, and that's an A. All right, so. Could you spell it phonetically? <laughs> it's spelled, it's spelled um, oh. U-S-I schwa. Um, it's, uh, yeah, but anyway, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the word for substance, which is really important in Christology because the substance of Christ is what the whole thing is about, what I'm talking about. Well, the word that's used in the Gospels, in both of the Gospels, for daily is... <coughs> Epi Usi <coughs> Different ending on that V is actually a new. Funny, funny, funny. So does that mean daily? I mean, just like you know nothing about Greek, but does that mean daily? No. You would know. I don't know. No. <laughs> so Epi is the is the preposition meaning upon, over, on. Like on top of Uzion, Uzia, same word, just a different ending because it's you because these languages do that, decline and whatnot. It's on top of substance. Does that mean daily? <laughs> no. But what do we say about the bread that Christ gives us every day in the Mass? Daily bread. Oh, what does that even mean though? In the in the in our believer sense, what does that mean? Does it mean that it's like Daily in the everyday sense, or does it mean something else? It means like supernatural bread. Supernatural, exactly. Yeah. Super substance bread. Yeah. 
And then, so in the Latin of the Vulgate of Jerome, which is also a Bible I go to, but I didn't bring that one. Uh, super substantialum. Above substance. There you go. Not daily. However, if you're a Protestant, and you are the maker of a Bible for Protestants, like every Bible is that exists in English, and apparently even this Bible, because this is also written to Protestants to be able to make them feel you know, more at home in the Catholic world. Um, <clears throat> you downplay the super substantial part. Anyway, let's talk about more of the Ipsissima Verba of Jesus. Okay. I'm going to do this. We're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to do it this way. Okay. Okay. First Thessalonians 5 2. Matthew 24 43 to 44. And Luke 12 13 to 40. 39 to 40. Oh, you said 23, 41 to 44, right? 24, 43 to 44. So this is just, we're going to be reading things aloud and hearing how things sound fun. And we're going to do the Paul first, because my whole thing is that really, remember, it's Paul where these things come from, not necessarily the Gospels. Okay, what does 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 say? For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Oh, absolutely. What does Matthew say? Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not <coughs> his house. Am I reading that right? Uh-huh. I thought I was reading that one, so I don't know. Okay. No, you're doing Luke. <laughs> So to you also must be prepared. <coughs> you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Great. Read to us Thessalonians again. Oh, uh, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I say the same thing an hour you don't expect. Yes, isn't that cool? Now read the Luke version. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. He must also be prepared for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Awesome. <laughs> so, remember at the beginning of the class we were talking about Son of Man versus Lord? Which of these is a simpler term? Which is one is more? Which one? Which of them is more basic in terms of the faith of Lord? Right. Yeah. I understand what that is. Oh, look! Like, how is it? How is it called in the Gospels? Son of Man. Oh, wow! Otherwise known as the Son of God, the Son of X is the title for Christ. Yeah. <coughs> so, which is more synthetic? <coughs> which which yes, one is? is Lord. Right, so Lord. So more synthetic. More synthetic, i.e., yeah. which is older? This one. Yeah much more expand upon. More okay, work. and that's what we're going to be doing for the next several minutes. We're going to be, like, this is the total hand-waving argument of <laughs> Pauline Christology! <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we're going to have fun doing this over and over again. All right. Robert, 1 Thessalonians uh, 5, 13, and then Mark 9, 50. 9, 50. So remember in my in my thing, First Thessalonians is the like really cool one because it's the really the first one. Yes. So so much the first one. Yeah. This is when you say first one, you mean like raw? I mean the, the first thing that was written down, almost certainly. The scholars agree, I'm not one of the scholars, but I agree with them, is the first thing written down in the New Testament. The first text. The first text the first that we have yeah. of the New Testament. Yeah. Actually, in this case, of anything. Yeah. So 1 Thessalonians is really cool. Okay, what does 1 Thessalonians 5.13 say? And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly, that in receiving the word of God, from hearing us, 
you receive not a human word, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is now at work in you who believe. No. Are you sure? First Thessalonians 5.13? First Thessalonians, first Thessalonians, oh, whoops, I'm sorry. But that is so, also a lovely thing. Well, I wanted to keep you on your path. That's way different than mine. <laughs> and, to sh and to show esteem for them with special love on account of their work, be, be at peace amongst yourself. Yes, that's it. Okay. Now Mark 9.50. Salt is good, and if salt becomes insipid, with what will you restore its flavor? Keep salt in yourselves, and you will have peace with one another. Oh! Did you hear that at the end? Keep salt in Wow. Interesting. Interesting, like, the, the, this phrase, keep peace with one another. Hmm. Hmm. Totally different contexts. One of them <coughs> is the teaching of Jesus allegorically with salt. One of them is not. Keep peace among one another. Interesting. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Like seriously, this is maybe this is like really kind of dumb and maybe this is kind of fake. But we're gonna go through all of these. What I have here in my fun little book. Oh, this is the synopsis of the four gospels. This is the synopsis of Paul, where it puts all the Paul things next to each other. So I'm cheating. Uh, this one does exist in English, this one does not. I don't want it. <laughs> I know, right? It only did. Uh, this is, the, my, my professor put this together. Pita, th this guy, Antonio Pita. Here's Pita's book, The Gospel of Paul. Um, <laughs> he had several books like these. Also, Paul, the, um, how do you say that? The portrait painter of Jesus. It sounds better in Italian. All right, so, okay, so 1 Corinthians 4, 12, Romans 12, 14, Matthew 5, 44, Luke 6, 28, and you're off this one. All right. All right, 1 Cor 4, 12? Yeah, 1 Corinthians 4, 12. Tell us. And we toil, working with our hands. When ridiculed, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. Awesome. Romans 12, 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Interesting. Matthew 5, 44. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Is there more about that? No. The next one's 45. Oh, do I do 45 also? No, I don't know. Okay, that's the best plan. That's a good plan. And then 628. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Hmm. Hmm. Do you, do you hear the, the similarities in those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So read it again. Yeah, I, mean, I, I get it. But yeah. Is the point you're trying to make is that Paul's teaching is in different places, in different books of the Bible, that are the same thoughts just written by different people? In a different way. <laughs> so, exactly. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, exactly. So let's read. Uh, these are going to get harder to distinguish, but let us read this one again, 1 Corinthians. And we toil, working with our own hands. When ridiculed, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. Okay. All right. That's the basis. Then it gets used differently. Yeah. Romans. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. All right. The, the you, bless those who persecute you, is actually not in the Greek. But it's fun. Anyway. And then we get the two gospel versions. When I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute. Okay, and? Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. Exactly. Interesting, though, that there's a differentiation of who the actor, yeah, the actor is. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Have you, they morphed. They morphed. Have you morphed. Get it? Have you from, from the actor to the passive? Yeah. But it's the same idea. Did you get that differentiation? 
So in the Gospels, it's passive, those people doing it to you. Yeah. And then in the letters of Paul, it's do this to them. Yeah. Get that? The difference? Mm -hmm. With your hand holds. I mean, I mean ah. I'm not there with you, so you guys need to make sure you do this. Do ah. this. I'm not there to speak to you every day. Ah. These, 50 years later, ah. guys, I think we're a little more mature in our Christology. Be this way. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's precisely what's going on. Okay, so, so far all these are from the first, um, from the first tradition, from, uh, that is from Paul himself. Okay, next one, 1 Corinthians 6.13, and then Mark 7.19. Take that quell, all right. <laughs> Yeah, because there's nothing before Mark, right? Okay, 1 Corinthians 6.13. Good. Okay. Please read, Corinthians. Food for the stomach, and the stomach for food. But God will do away with both the one and the other. The body, however, is not for immortality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. The body is not for immorality. In immorality. Whew. It's a wonderful word in the Greek. I'll get to that in a second. Um, and what does Mark say? Mark 7.19 says, Since it enters not the heart, but the stomach, and passes out into the latrine, and it says in, in uh, parentheses, Thus he declared all foods clean. Yes. Exactly. Once again, the teaching is changed for the gospel. Which one did you read, Jeff? Read it again. Oh, no, which one did you read? First Corinthians. Six. Oh, first Corinthians. So, Paul, first. First yes. Corinthians. Yeah, but so written first. Yes. Later. Yes. But first of the Synoptic Gospels, we believe. Interesting. Perhaps. Exactly. Hmm. Did, did you say earlier that they were written at the same time? Um, so, the Pauline scriptures are happening in the same period. We're talking okay. about like 20 decade. years, yeah. like from. Uh, the late 40s to the early 60s, somewhere in there. And then we start talking about the Gospels from the 60s through to the beginning of the second century. And then who goes first is kind of up to you. Most people like to say Mark these days, but that's a really dumb argument because it's based entirely on Mark just being simple. Okay, and the simplicity of it, therefore you must not be advanced. Advanced? Advanced. <laughs> that, that is seriously the only reason why. Um, and I say, no, that's not the reason why Mark, Mark is simple. And also, it's, also, it's not the reason why Mark is short either. There are different considerations that you can have there, especially because Mark simply was just not writing at the same level as Matthew. So take it however you want. Uh, Matthew or Mark first, and then Luke like later, but maybe not. But then definitely John the last. Yes. yes. When you date these uh, writings, there's an absence of anything in the writings uh, referring to the sacking of Jerusalem in 70. Right. So, but maybe there might be. Is there? I think so. But, but even, <laughs> even <laughs> then, <laughs> okay, where? In the Yom Talmud and also in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew, where? <laughs> We're no can no. We can't. We cannot do this right now. This is in the area of like we cannot do this because we have to do this Christology right now, not the Old Testament types, because that's totally Old Testament types. Is is the answer to your question? It has to do with the temple veil. Anyway, um, that, okay. So that was the thing. And I also promised to say something interesting about Corinthians. Um, it's it's yes. So uh, the immorality. The word for that's that's used in Greek over and over again, that our you know sissy mouth Bibles in English translate, the word is porneia, which requires no translation. However, porneia, immorality, however specifically fornication, which is a big deal to to, to, to Paul, just read Romans. Um, <clears throat> okay, next round. So, 1 Corinthians 7, 10 through 11, then Mark 10, 11, and 12, Matthew 9, 9, and Luke 16, 18. Uh, 
said um, Mark 10, 11, and 12. Were you talking about the chapters 10, 11, and 12? Uh, chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. Oh. Because <coughs> we're just doing little fragments, little tiny fragments. Okay, I'm getting there. Okay. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 10 and 11. Not I, but the Lord. A wife should not separate from her husband. And if she does separate, she must either remain single or become reconciled to her husband. And a husband should not divorce his wife. Yes. All right, Mark 10, 11, 12. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Great. Matthew 9, <coughs> 19, 9. 19.9. That's why I was, I was trying to make a correlation. There's no correlation. 19.9. Okay. Sorry. I got us out of rhythm. I, I beg your pardon. It was my fault. Honor. 19.9. I'm sorry. I say unto you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, Pornea. and marries another, commits adultery. Yeah, absolutely. 1618, Luke 1618. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And the one who marries a woman divorced from her husband <coughs> commits adultery. Excellent. Which of those was the, was the simplest? Which of those Gospels was the simplest instruction? Corinthians. Of the Gospels was oh, the simplest sorry. instruction? Read here again. That'd be Mark. I think actually Matthew. Let's hear Mark, and then Matthew, and then Luke. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her, and if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Great. And I then, say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another commits adultery. Period. Right? Right. Okay. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And the one who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. Okay, so we get adultery twice in this one, adultery twice in that one, adultery once in Matthew. Mm -hmm. And how many times do we get in Corinthians? Read Corinthians again. Okay. 7, 10 through 11. To the married, however, I give this instruction, not I, but the Lord. A wife should not separate from her husband, and if she does separate, she must either remain single or become reconciled to her husband, and a husband should not divorce his wife. Awesome. Addressed to the husband's addressed to the wife. A good 20 years before, written after. The simplest one is the one of Matthew. Amazing. Just amazing. All right, so this is, like seriously, this is my hand-waving New Testament Christology. Do you get what I'm trying to put out here? Paul is where it's at. <laughs> and by the way, the, the but you just said once again, Mark maybe not first, Matthew maybe not first, but it depends. Like let's just not take it like as gospel truth that there is a well source and then Mark is first. That's what I'm saying. Just like let's, let's hold on to our horses there for a second because that's the scholarship of 150 years ago. Yes. No, I'm just saying, obviously he's taking Paul and you know, 50, 60 years later morphing it they're morphing it for the community yes no, exactly like exactly the actor but, here is a woman yes and now we go over here men yes shape up. yes okay and also i'm also saying part of these things these are the words of jesus these are jesus's words <clears throat> as being recorded by paul from the people who told paul about them yeah. and then being taken up again in the gospels later who and, is, and they're, they're getting them from wherever they're getting them more from hearing them themselves or maybe not Matthew, you know, yeah. So I just finished this CD series on the Dead Sea Scrolls, and in the uh, I, was, well, I was hoping this would come up. Yeah. It was uh, it was like twelve CDs, and it, I learned that the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had this big argument. The Pharisees, I never really realized, were like contract sharpshooters. They're always trying a way to water down the law, and so they had these gets, and they would divorce for like any reason. Yes. Yes. And. Uh, 
a lot of the stuff for Paul is basically said, no, don't do that stuff. Quit divorcing for yes. any reason. Yes. Um, it's interesting also to note that today, the only sect of, Juda uh, of Judaism which persists of the ancient sects is the Pharisaical sect. It is only Pharisaic Judaism that persists to today. And getting a get is something you can still do. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> All right, but not part of this. <laughs> okay, let's, let's move out of the words of Jesus. Okay. Now, all right, there are only so many of us here. And now we're going to take something from every single, every, from all the whole, the whole gamut of Paul. <coughs> we are just going to have some fun. And these, I'm just going to tell you once again, hand-waving argument, these are before Paul. Because these are things that Paul got from others, usually because he said so. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 1, 9 through 10. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 25. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 5. Galatians 1, 4. And I have a whole lot more where these came from. Right. I, so much. <laughs> I am, I am. All right, these don't line up in the way that we were just doing a second ago. These are just things where Paul is saying, <coughs> where we get them from Paul, these aren't mine. He's, he's, he's telling that there's some giving and receiving going on in these places. Except they're actually all about the same thing. Okay, Thessalonians. I want to make sure I got it. Chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, right? Yes, First Thessalonians 1, 9, 10. Okay. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. Yep. Did you, did, you, did you get what the thing is there? They themselves said that. They said that. They oh, said. But they themselves. They, okay, they so said. They. They. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah. Paul did not make this up. He says so. Okay. <laughs> Things are before Paul. And what was this about? What were we, what were we just reading about? Read it again. Uh, for they themselves only <laughs> declare for us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, who will be raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. Oh! So <laughs> yes, right? yes, but like Paul is saying, though, he's saying <coughs> stuff about Christ. About, he's saying stuff about Christ that other people were saying. He's reporting what other people oh, were saying about Christ. Okay. okay, so this is not coming from me. This is coming from the people I'm hearing about. Ah, exactly. So if that's the to wake up. Pre-Pauline. So we're just doing words of Jesus, now we're doing pre paul and Christology. You know, what are the goals it's for today? And what is the what is the Christology here? Jesus comes to save. Great. When you say pre paul and you're talking about when Paul heard it. Heard it from oh, someone else. Somebody, he's he's reporting what he heard. Yeah. Okay. I.e. he did not make it up. Well, Assuming that we were trusting Paul not to be a scoundrel, you know. Otherwise, we can all just go home. <laughs> yeah, class over. <laughs> all right. All right. So you, you see, like, this is, this is the thing that I'm doing. This is, once again, the hand-waving argument. Okay, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. He for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are and for whom we exist. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are and through whom we exist. Yes. Yes. This is good time. No, I mean, we're not doing, we're not, we're not, these things do oh, not line up to each other oh, like okay. Erasmus did. Okay. We're not, we're not doing that again. Okay. But I'm saying that like, he's getting these things from, from elsewhere. Okay. From, from elsewhere. I don't know. I wish I knew. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, it could be, it's the oral tradition. Read it, read it again. Yeah. Yet for us 
there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are and through whom we exist. Uh-huh. The first half of that would be able to be said by a good Jew. Second half of that, no. <clears throat> is there a funny little uh, annotation in your Bible that says, oh, for this formula, look for it in this other place? There's no, there's no funny little annotation there saying, for other scriptural sources, see here. Um, there is in mind, but I don't want to go looking for it. Is it Malachi 2.10? Is it Malachi? Is it Malachi two ten? There's like an I. <laughs> is it exactly something that we may have read yesterday at mass? Malachi two ten. <laughs> Sorry. Do you, do, how many of you guys go to daily mass? No, no, I was up in Okay. All right. Do you remember this from, from like yesterday or the day before? Well, Malachi is always going to be messed up, but. <laughs> um, have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Paul died from Malachi. All right, First Corinthians eleven twenty three to twenty five. So that is, that's a pre Pauline Christology. That's that's before Paul, and then made into a Christology because Paul just put in Christ's name there. He even told you that he did because he took the the, the one God thing and then made it Christ. Christology from before Paul. But I said we're not going to talk about Old Testament Christology, so move on. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-25. For I received from the Lord what I handed on to Oh, period. Just stop right, just stop right there. <laughs> okay. Now, what is this most important thing that Paul somehow received from the Lord that he's handed on to us? Go on. For I received from the Lord which that what I also handed to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night was handed over took bread, and after had given thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, this is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Yup. Heard that one before, guys? <laughs> couple of times. Couple of times. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, how does it look like in the Gospels? Does it like sound that way? Do you want to go back to doing the gospel thing? Because this is a fun one. Okay. Alright, let's go back to the gospel thing. So hold on to your to your Pauline thing for a second. Okay. Uh, Mark 14, 22 to 24. Matthew 26, 26 to 28. Luke 22, 19 to 20. So this all-important part is, uh, is a really excellent example of the superiority of Paul on something truly important. I was, uh, my, my brother teaches Sunday school because he's a nice guy. And I happened to be like sitting out in his class one day when he was teaching, you know, Mass and Eucharist things. And he was trying to look at his Bible to find, you know, the stuff that people say at Mass. He was looking at the gospel, like, no, brother, no. All right, so, so Matthew 26, 26 to 28. All right, then Mark 14, 22 to 24. Read it to us. Okay. While they were eating, he took bread and said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Yep. Uh, Matthew? While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. Yep. Luke? That he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given up for you, or given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. 
Which of these are what we say at Mass? All of them. Yeah. Those words not familiar. <laughs> but none of them individually. Yeah. 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 Sin was the only one that was mentioned, right? Hamartion. Right. Yeah, the Hamartion. The, the, um, the sin in Matthew. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? Yeah. These are post pollen These are so where's the pre pollen connection? I mean, is that something uh, Paul? The the, the pre pollen is. These are words of the Lord. Okay. Paul said, read, read oh, okay. the beginning of Paul's, oh, I said of that. the Corinthians again. Yeah. The first time I received from the Lord what was okay. handed on to you. Which was yeah. this very important thing, okay. which has okay. been, of course, in use in churches for a very, very long time. I mean, and also in use, in constant use by the churches for a very, very long time. So, so I'll, I'll just dedicate. What period are we talking about? Dedicate. Yeah, well, I heard, was that pre Paul? Um, because I know they talk right some structure there. And the, I, 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 the, the, so, like the, the the composition of the Didache is actually very substantially after Paul. Okay. I put the Didache in like around the same time as like John is being written or right. after. Okay. End of the century. Yes, end of the yes, end wow. century into the next one. People will dip, uh, write it differently, but okay. yeah, and also also like you know Hippolytus and the pseudo Hippolytus. Like now we're getting into what really turns into the fathers of the church. I mean, the Didache is really like maybe the first patristic source because it's very much important. It's after the apostles, it's of the apostles, but not themselves. Right. Okay. You've all encountered the Didache before, right? right. I was thinking maybe it's where Paul got some of this, but no, you're saying it, it's 60 years after this stuff. It's, it's yeah. long. Or, or he went to his local Barnes and Nobles <laughs> and it got <laughs> <quite> well <laughs> off the shelf, <laughs> which well. is hot off the presses for right after Christ. Yeah. No. No, no, guys. <laughs> so, of all the books in the New Testament, which one historically scholars say was the first one to mention "Do this in remembrance of me"? Corinthians. Corinthians. Yours, because Corinthians oh, is written first. long before. Yeah. Corinthians. So this is this is also this is First Corinthians, right? This is long, long before any gospel. Yes. And then you know, if you go to the Gospel of John, it. In the, the God, yeah, you go into John six and you, and, and you get the tradition of of the actual where Jesus saying this is a hard saying and some of them left. Yeah. Do you see? But that has that has more detail. Yes. And so could that be part of the oral tradition? Yes. Because it got expa it seems Also, to, also, just be John. If we're, <laughs> precisely, if we're talking about people who are actually there hearing these things and paying attention. Uh, the beloved disciple yeah. was probably there paying attention. And he was probably of the, of of these disciples who were not particularly educated, except for Paul, um, the one who paid most attention and staying very close to the heart of Jesus out of love for him, John. Why the transition? Which is so cool, you know? Isn't that isn't it just cool? Like these are real people, right? Yeah, go on. Why the transition to the beloved disciple where he doesn't get named? There seems to be a transition that, that, that just shows up and from then on he's a beloved disciple. Yeah, that's a really good question. Mostly, mm -hmm. mostly out of... I prefer, I don't know. I would, that's a good question, but it's, 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 it's too much for this class though, we can't talk about it. No, it could not be. Uh, that, that's something which is absolutely not true. He's talking about the beloved disciple himself who's writing this. Wow. What did you say? I want to hear it again. No, I, 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 I just read something where and the beloved, just, since it's never named, it could be different people. It could be different people, people there, but I say, no. I've read a couple books where it's just they like, said no, it was, like The uh, Baptist is always John the Baptist, not the other baptizing dudes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and there were others. But it's just, it's just the shorthand. I've read a couple books where someone said it was Lazarus. That family of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus gets gets way too much. In, there, there's a reason why they got deported to France early on. All right, all right, that was a funny joke. Anyway, let's come back to First um, Corinthians fifteen three that I had you mark before. Yeah. yeah. Read us that. For I handed on to you, as of the first importance, what I received, 
that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Caiaphas, then the twelve. Right. And he, and he makes a, a point of saying, like, I didn't make this up, guys. I'm just telling you what was given to me. All right, in Galatians 1 through 1, 4. Just 1, 4? Yeah, 1, 4. Okay. Who gave himself for our sins, that he might rescue us from the present evil age, in accord with the will of our God and Father. Tom Panero. Yeah. This is also one of those more interesting things. He did not get this. <coughs> Once again, I have to hand my, wave my hands here, but Paul did not make this up. This is also now <coughs> later in Paul. <coughs> <laughs> but we are, we are running out of time. We have 20 minutes to finish this up. So, I would like to take now and talk about secondary kinds of things in Christ. Alright, so I mean secondary, secondary kinds of things in Paul. Where we're going to get some good stuff and say, here are secondary things. I'm going to take something from the first tradition that is in Paul himself and also from other things. All right. Let's talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 1.10. And then Romans 7 4. And then Philippians 3 11. And 2 Timothy 2 8. All of these things are going to be about the resurrection. So first Thessalonians. And to await the Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. Okay. That's who he is. Then the Romans. I'm so sorry. Romans comes right after Acts. So I, I, I do truly encourage everyone to go to your nearest Christian store, probably not a Catholic store, but maybe who knows, and get little, you know, taggy hacks. I'll be short some books. <laughs> what? I'll be short some books if you, so you get the Catholic version. version. <laughs> In the same way, my brothers, you also were put to death to the law through the body of Christ, so that you might belong to another to the one who was raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit for God. That is so Paul. That's, that's lovely. Now, Gal um, no, I didn't give anyone Galatians, but Philippians? Did I give someone Philippians? Or this is a short verse. If somehow yeah. I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Yeah, wait a minute. This is a whole different kind of resurrection. Interesting. And 2 Timothy? Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, such is my gospel. Yeah, yeah. So notice the, the, the way in which actually simplicity works to pare down the interests of the resurrection of Christ in the differing, er, in the differing um, uh, 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 traditions of Paul. Interesting that 2 Timothy is, is emphatic about this is the gospel. Which way did you read? Written? From Philippians. Philippians. And that was written, was it written by Paul? Yeah. Yours was Romans, Romans. written by Paul. Yes. Mm -hmm. and yours First Thessalonians, was written by Paul. And then 